Hey guys, Jacqueline here for Android Central, and when Blackberries were the main smartphone on the market, I was using one. I love that stupid little brick game, and the physical keyboard felt perfect. Over half a decade later, I'm greeted with a package from Blackberry that contains their latest flagship smartphone. It combines their old roots of the physical keyboard and a modern smartphone, and it looks like this, and it's definitely aimed at government officials, CEOs, and maybe even a person that is nostalgic for a physical keyboard. And I'm definitely not the first two, maybe I'm the third if we're being honest here. Regardless, I'm gonna be using it on the daily as my primary flagship for web browsing, social media management, emailing, basically everything that I use my smartphone for, which is a lot. So I'm going to tell you guys what I love about the device, what I hate about the device, and if you guys should go out and buy one. With that all said, let's get into this one week challenge video. Okay, so it's day one with the BlackBerry Key 1, and let's start out with the unboxing experience. So we made a full video unboxing the retail unit of the BlackBerry Key 1, link below if you want to check that out, but overall it's a pretty positive experience. The boxing feels very premium for about $500 to $600 device, so I'm happy to see that it comes with a lot of stuff. It comes with pretty decent headphones, nothing that you're going to be blown away by, but they sound better than uh, other headphones that come with other competing smartphones, and they do have a good microphone for um, audio quality if you uh, are going to do a lot of talking this phone which if you're the demographic for this phone you probably are and then of course it comes with a usb type c charger which means it packs a usb type c port yay i'm very happy to see that on this phone micro usb would have definitely been um, a downfall so usb type c for the win if you want to check out everything else that comes in the box like i said we made a video on it but let's move on to what i actually think about the device through my first day of use the key one is a pretty interesting phone i've been using it for a couple of hours and i have to say i have a lot of opinions on it mostly positive though starting with the good the phone feels great in the hand the back texture is grippy and looks stealthy and the camera hump on the top definitely adds some character to it hop over to the front and you're greeted with a physical keyboard yeah, these still exist. This is a feature that BlackBerry is known for, so it's really no surprise that it's on their latest and greatest. The keys are nicely backlit, and they are just big enough for my fingers to touch without double hitting or hitting the wrong key. The bottom of the phone is kind of curved like an iPhone to fit better in the hand while typing. Typing so far has been really fun. Nothing can replace that physical click. On day one though, I do have one little gripe, and I'm sure I'll get used to it over this week using this phone 24-7, but for right now, my gripe is that there's no row of numbers. There's a row of empty space between the last row of keys and the bottom of the phone, so I feel like if they moved down the keyboard a bit and put a number line on top, the typing experience would be infinitely better. As of now, I'm left with using the alt key to get symbols and numbers, or hitting the symbols button and having on-screen numbers and symbols, which takes up a lot of space considering that the screen is only 4.5 inches to begin with. I'm hoping I'll get more used to having press the alt key when I want to get to a number, but right now it's kind of a bit of an annoyance. When setting up a new device, I always download a ton of applications, so I tried that with this phone. I downloaded like five or six at one time, and the phone did not heat up, which was pretty impressive. On the LG G6, which I was testing last week, the phone heated up a ton when I was downloading my applications, so I was really surprised when this phone did not heat up at all. The specs of this phone definitely aren't anything mind-blowing, as they're pretty typical specs for a mid-range $500 to $600 smartphone, but the phone feels really fast, and even when the slightly cluttered multitasking area, the phone just flies. I'm going to keep playing with the phone to see how it performs over time, but for right now, I'm really impressed with the performance, especially while playing games. I'm going to continue setting up and playing with this device for the rest of the day, and I'll check back in tomorrow. It's now day two of the BlackBerry Q1 challenge, and I've been using this all day to run my business off of, sending emails, replying to tweets, replying to comments, doing a bunch of stuff on it, and the battery life has been insane today. It's the end of the day, and I'm not nearly done with the battery. I'm at about 30%, so if I can see this phone being able to last for two days if you're a very moderate user, and one and a half days if you're a heavy user like me. Over this past day, though, there definitely are a few things that I've noticed that I love about it, and then some things that I'm not so hot on. The first thing I love is the fingerprint sensor. What's that? You don't see one? It's because it's built into the spacebar on the keyboard. That was really a smart integration on BlackBerry's part, and it shows that they put a lot of thought into the design. The placement is perfect, and the actual sensor is extremely fast. I often find that my fingerprint isn't red on phones like the LG G6 or the iPhone 7 Plus, but on this phone, it was not only as fast as those phones, but it was also a lot more accurate, and I felt it worked a lot more for me. Alongside that, the metal build with the grippy back also was a pleasure to hold. When BlackBerry set this out to me, they also included a wallet case made by Toomey, and I tried that for half of today, but I prefer the phone naked, no skin required. Something that's not so hot though is the power button. 
Placed on the left side, I'm not quite used to it yet, and I often find myself hitting the customizable BlackBerry key, thinking it will turn on the phone. For lefties, this is probably the first time that you're going to be using something like this, so if you're left hand dominant, this could be super convenient after the adjustment period. It's actually in the perfect spot for my pointer finger, but I'm just really not used to it yet, so I feel like I was wasting time trying to click the BlackBerry customize key instead of clicking the power button on the left side. I'll keep you guys posted though, because I'm sure as the days go on, I'll get a little bit more used to it. That power button though, turns on the gorgeous display. The stock black background that this phone came with shows off the deep blacks that the screen is able to produce. It's a lot smaller than I'm used to coming in at 4.5 inches, but as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the phone isn't aimed at someone who wants a phone for content consumption, but rather someone who wants a secure phone that packs a lot of business features. Like the giant Blackberry messaging hub, which has all of your notifications in one place, or BBM, which is Blackberry Messenger. The screen is really sharp though, so you can get away with watching a video on here. It just might be a lot smaller than you're used to. It does offer an overall pleasant media experience though, as the speakers are really sharp and loud. Just wrapped up day three with the Blackberry Q1, and I had a call today for about an hour or so, and the call quality sounded great on my end from the other person, and I asked them and they said that I sounded good also. So if you're interested in this phone and you do a lot of business calls or something like that, you should be pretty good with it. What I will say though, is it's a little bit of a heavy phone, so holding it up for a full hour got me a little bit tired so i just threw on the headphones that the phone came with and i was all set sound quality was also really good on those to update you on my concerns yesterday about the power button i'm still not really that used to it i still find myself clicking the customizable key it would be awesome if we could change the customizable key to act as a power button but unfortunately you can't it is really useful to be able to launch apps or something like that as you can uh, set it up to either launch applications or do specific actions which is nice but i would have liked if it was on the left side where the power button is and then have the power button on the right side. I'm sure that if enough people want that, they could fix that in software, but I don't see them doing that anytime soon. And I bet that over time, we'll get more used to it. But as of the third day, I'm still not completely used to it yet. The key one also supports the double tap to wake feature. So as long as I remember it, it's easy enough to do that instead of reaching for the power button. It doesn't support a double tap to sleep though, which is something that I think all double tap to wake phones should have, as I constantly find myself hitting the phone twice to sleep it after I just want to check uh, quickly what time it is and I just double tap to wake it up. Again, that could be added through software though, and BlackBerry did tell me that this is a pre-production model and they are expecting to do a lot of differences in the software before they release it to the public, so that's going to be something that you're going to want to bear in mind. Any of this really could change um, by the time BlackBerry comes out with the official retail model, so if you want to see an updated version on this review, definitely let us know in the comments down below. Another feature that's unique to this phone though that I noticed while messing around with the keyboard is the shortcuts that you can apply to each key. For example, you can open up an app or speed dial a designated person with a click of a button. I had the T button set to Twitter and the Y button set to YouTube, and that's actually extremely useful, more than I thought it would be. So I actually showed this phone today to a previous BlackBerry owner, and their eyes literally lit up, and they said that they were going to pick this phone up for their next device. Nostalgia for that physical keyboard is real. One thing that I didn't get to thoroughly test today is the camera, so I'm going to run out now and shoot some photos, and then I'll talk about them tomorrow. Day 4 with the BlackBerry Q1, and yesterday I mentioned that I was going to take a bunch of photos and let you guys know what I think. So let's discuss the camera on this device. So the Key1 packs the same sensor as a Pixel, but then it has different things like the lens and the cover. So the photos are a little bit different, but they're overall really impressive. All the photos I took were vibrant. I would say about 95% of them were properly exposed, which can't be said for a lot of flagships. So that was impressive. One area that it does suffer a little bit is low light. In both video and photo mode, there is noticeable grain when the lights go a little bit lower than what the camera favors. But in mild to good lighting conditions, this camera will bang out a shot. I was really impressed with it. For a device that's not necessarily targeted someone that's really interested in taking a lot of high quality photos and videos, it is really nice to see that when you buy a phone like this, you also get photos and videos. You don't have to sacrifice good photo and video quality to get a physical keyboard and other features that the Key One offers. So I was happy to see how good the camera was. It's definitely not the best camera on any flagship. I would give that to the S8 right now. But overall, I was very impressed with the Key One and it will definitely excel for posts on social media and stuff like that, which is nice to see for a BlackBerry device. It's the best camera that they've ever used on any device. It knocks out the print from last year. It's the end of day five now, and today was mostly hangouts calls, responding to comments on Twitter, and then watching some YouTube videos. Overall, the device handled it really well. Let's discuss. For responding to comments, this thing was a pleasure to use because of the keyboard, which I'm pretty much used to now. I still don't love having to press it all to go to numbers, but I love the tactile feel for typing regular words. After about six days of use, I have to say the phone still feels really fast. It's not sluggish like its older brother, the Priv, and I would say that it's about up to par with other phones in this price range. 
It gets a little choppy during the weirdest things like texting, but then it's totally fine during Asphalt 8. So I'm not sure, maybe it's a software thing. BlackBerry did say that the pre-production models were gonna have some software bugs that the final units were not. So only time will tell if it's a performance thing or if it's a software thing. I'm gonna bank on software, but I'll keep you guys posted on my Twitter when I get the final software version. Software on here is pretty stock though, which is another thing I love about the phone. BlackBerry adds in tiny enhancements to the software, like a hold down on an application for widget previews, which is great for social or calendar apps, or the quick action apps that go on your home screen to quickly open up a part of an app instead of a general screen. For example, opening up directly to the timer part of the clock application instead of the alarm section. All of those little enhancements make Android feel like it was made for the key one and not the other way around. I'm not a huge fan of the multitasking layout as I feel like it just looks a little bit too cluttered, but that's just my personal preference. Overall, the software on the BlackBerry key one is a hit out of the park. Just wrapped up day six with the BlackBerry Q1. Today was just a day of filming a bunch of videos and I used the BlackBerry Q1 to read my scripts off of. And I'm gonna be a little bit honest here, I'm disappointed. The keyboard on the key one is also a touchpad, so you can use it to swipe up and down the screen. The problem is that the swipes are massive leaps on the page, not just small steps if you want to just scroll down a few lines. All right, so that's totally fine. Just don't use the keyboard as a trackpad, right? Wrong. I guess the keyboard is just super sensitive because if my finger even slightly hits it, it will scroll down to the bottom of the page and I would lose my place in the script. Again, like I said before, I'm not going to be too hard on the key one as this could just be a software thing, so I'm going to wait to get my final verdict on this until the official software comes out. Right now though, that definitely is an inconvenience and I have to rearrange the way I hold my phone to uh, counteract the fact that it would constantly scroll if my finger even just slightly touched the keyboard. What I will say though is that touch sensitive keyboard is really awesome while using your phone in landscape mode like this as uh, when you're reading articles or something like that you can scroll down the uh, display without having to actually touch the screen so it gives you a lot more screen real estate and it's just very intuitive to do. And on Chrome for some reason the scrolling was actually really smooth so I'm not sure maybe it's just optimized for certain applications better than others. I'll have to keep posted on that but that was a feature that I really did enjoy on the Key One. Okay so it's uh, the end of the final day of the Blackberry Key One chat. Challenge. And I'm a little bit sad to be honest, uh, but I do have a few thoughts about this device and whether or not you guys should pick it up. So here it is. If you want a great Android phone with a big screen, don't pick this up. If you're perfectly fine with a virtual keyboard and this is a little bit of a stretch of your budget, don't pick this up. If you want a device that's great for media consumption, don't pick this up. But if you want a device that has a physical keyboard or you want a device that's the securest form of Android in my opinion, you should pick this up. I mean, it really comes down to those two things because without those, this phone is really not that unique. So if you're really into a physical keyboard, this is kind of your only option and it's actually done really well. So I have nothing bad to say about it. I was really happy with the keyboard. Personally, I'm actually really happy with virtual keyboards as I type faster on them, but there is something about that click that this keyboard offers that's just unmatched by any competition. So if you're really, really into that, then this is the phone for you. But for anyone else that really wants uh, to watch a lot of videos on their phone and just wants to use it for media consumption and social media and stuff like that, you really do not need this phone. And I think you're gonna be a little bit disappointed by the screen size of it because for watching videos on a long period of time, it definitely is nice to have that 5.7 inch display like the S8 offers, or even like that uh, 5.5 inch display that the OnePlus 3T offers. So the BlackBerry Key One is definitely an awesome phone, but I don't think it's a phone for me and it probably isn't the phone for most people out there but it is a phone for government officials and ceos that just want a tool and not necessarily a phone for media consumption i mean media consumption is okay on here but it's definitely backburnered to uh the keyboard and to security and stuff like that so that's kind of my thoughts on the key one let us know what you thought of this video by leaving a comment below if you like this content and you want more like it be sure to subscribe to our channel and i'll catch you guys all in the next one thank you guys all so much for watching bye